President Muhammad Buhari receives accredited ambassadors to Nigeria, reassures on credible elections in 2019. National Assembly approves 2019 INEC election budget for security agencies. Nigeria marks World Food Day, restates commitment to food self-sufficiency, and Kanu State Government goes to court on viral video clip on Governor Ganduji. Hello and a warm welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Joseph Johnson in Abuja. Also reading with me tonight is Michael Olaleye from Lagos and uh, Suleiman Abdullahi Rikachukung is in Kaduna for us. Good to see you both. Now, President Muhammad Wari earlier today spoke with Mohammed Liman, father of Hawat Liman, the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, midwife, who was slain by Boko Haram terrorists. A statement by Garba Shehu, senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, in a phone call says, President Buhari commiserated with the family and assured Ms. Leman's father that the Nigerian government did everything possible to save his daughter's life, expressing sadness that all the efforts turned out unsuccessful. He regretted that her commitment to helping victims of the Boko Haram insurgency ended in such a brutal way. President Mohamed Wari also spoke with uh, Peter uh, Mora, the president of the ICRC, extending condolences on the loss of the midwife. The president commended the ICRC for the great work they had been doing in Nigeria by providing health care services to victims of insurgency in some of the most affected areas. President Buhari appealed to the ICRC to continue their services in Nigeria and not to give up despite the unfortunate and painful loss of their staff. According to the president, Nigeria needs the ICRC and the government will continue to do all it can to protect staff of the organization and other aid workers that are providing much needed humanitarian services in the northeast region, which had been affected by almost a decade long conflict. In the same vein, the United States Embassy has extended its heartfelt condolence to the family of Hawa Mohammed Liman and the International Committee of the Red Cross. The embassy, in a statement, expressed solidarity with Nigerian government and partners seeking synergy to work for the defeat of ISIS West Africa and prevent further tragedies. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Hawa's family, to her colleagues and to those still suffering in captivity, the embassy says. Now, President Muhammad Bari says the desperate manner in which uh, the nation's youth dare the Sahara Desert and Mediterranean Sea to take menial jobs abroad is hurting the pride of Nigeria. Exchanging views with the outgoing High Commissioner of the Republic of Namibia, the President promised to put a stop to the disturbing trend and making, by making the country livable again. State House correspondent Adam Samba reports. President Muhammad Buhari noted that Nigeria and South Sudan have a lot in common as regards developmental aspirations. He said although even for Nigeria it has not been smooth sailing all the way, but things are now much better. And since the troubled country wants to share from Nigeria's experience, the federal government will support where it can towards achieving stability. The president, however, advised the leaders of South Sudan to keep making sacrifices so that the enabling environment can be created, stressing that stability should always be the number one priority. As he puts it, you cannot manage a country efficiently without first stabilizing it. President Buhari said for the economy to grow, South Sudan must also provide jobs for the people, check corruption, and ensure that national resources are jealously guarded. The South Sudanese presidential envoy, Mr. Gad Kut, who is also his country's petroleum minister, said President Muhammad Buhari is widely admired across the continent for his role in fighting corruption, noting that it was the reason the African Union made him a champion of the anti-corruption crusade. He said South Sudan is putting its house in order, but needs assistance from Nigeria in transforming the nation's security achieving constitutional reforms 
and enhancing infrastructural development. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And President Muhammad Bari is reassuring Nigerians and the international community that the 2019 elections will not only be free and fair, but usher the country into a more promising era of peace, unity and maturity. The president stated this while receiving four new ambassadors accredited to Nigeria. State House correspondent Adamu Sambor again reports. The new envoys were in the State House to present their letters of credence to President Muhammad Buhari so as to commence official duties in Nigeria. They are the ambassadors of the People's Republic of Japan, Yutaka Kikuta, Russian Federation, Alexei Shabashin, Brazil, Ricardo Guerra de Arujo, and the United Arab Emirate, Fahad Altafak. The president told the envoys separately that Nigeria's political and electoral institutions have continued to evolve in strength, skill, and experience after each election. Now at the threshold of another general election, the sixth in his series since the return to democracy in 1999, the president said he expects nothing short of free and fair conduct. President Buhari expressed the belief that the political system is good and if people work hard, they will succeed. The increase in the number of political parties that will fill candidates in 2019 elections, he said, indicates more democratic consciousness amongst Nigerians and willingness to serve the country. The president told the Russian Federation envoy in particular that discussions on reviving the Jakuta steel complex partnerships in agriculture and other bilateral interest in trade and economic development will be sustained. He commended the country for always standing by Nigeria. To the ambassador of Brazil, President Buhari noted that the historical ties between both countries and the shared potentials for growth will be further explored with strong emphasis on economic and social development. He said the number of Nigerians in Brazil already provides a strong reason for deeper and richer discussions for both countries. Exchanging views with the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates, Fahad Altafak, President Buhari assured him that Nigeria remains committed to strengthening the bilateral relationship that has existed between both countries for many years. The president expressed delight over the courtesies being extended to Nigerians in the United Arab Emirates, assuring the envoy that his administration will continue to strengthen business and trade relations with the Gulf nation. In his remarks, the ambassador of Japan said his country remains grateful for Nigeria's concern and support during the flooding that devastated the country and promised to work hard to further enhance relations in technology and agriculture. All the ambassadors who were earlier treated to a befitting diplomatic welcome assured the president of working hard towards enhancing ties in key sectors of the economy while wishing Nigeria the best in the forthcoming elections. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Turning to the legislature where the Senate has approved 53 billion naira for security agencies for the 2019 general elections. This was part of the funds requested by President Mohamed Buhari in the Supplementary Budget and Environment 2018. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. Aye. Those against On Thursday, 11 October 2018, the Senate considered and approved the 2019 general election budget of 189 billion naira for the Independent National Electoral Commission, which is a component of the total budget for the elections. That of the security agencies, which is also strategic to the conduct of the elections, we are scheduled for the next legislative day. And at Tuesday's plenary, the report of the Senate Committee on Appropriations on the Budget of the Security Agencies was presented and considered. The Office of the National Security Advisor, 9.4 billion. Department of State Service, 10.2. Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, 3.5 billion. The Nigerian Police Force is to get 27.3 billion, while the Nigerian Immigration Service gets 2.6 billion naira. The aggregate sum of 242 billion. 245 million 50,100 naira be approved as environment 
for 2019 general elections for ANEC and the above named security agencies. I therefore urge my colleagues uh, to give uh, the necessary approval uh, so that this report will be passed and then uh, these agencies will have the money to prosecute the 2019 election as requested by Mr. President. I hope with this that those respective agencies will do what is required in ensuring that we have a credible, safe election in 2019. The 53 billion security budget is to be vied from the Special Intervention Fund, just like the 189 billion for the Independent National Electoral Commission from the National Assembly, Ignatius, in Kuo, NTA News. In a similar development, the House of Representatives has approved the environment of the sum of $831,259,220,255 Naira to fund INEC for 2019 general elections. National Assembly correspondent Lamele reports that the fund will be sourced from 2018 Appropriation Act. The environments will make financial provisions for INEC, Office of the National Security Advisor, Department of State Security Service, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Nigeria Police Force and Nigeria Immigration Service. The request was a respect of buyment of funds to finance independent National Electric Commission, INEC and the security agencies toward preparation of the 2019 general election for which no provision were made in the 2018 Appropriation Act. Those in favor of the motion say aye, those against it say nay. Are you serving? Tuesday's plenary also passed at second reading a bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act, which seeks to address identified gaps in existing law to entrench an effective and more transparent electoral process. Other bills that made it through second reading are those seeking to provide a legal framework to establish 20 federal medical centers sponsored by Tajuddin Abbas and the bill for an act to establish National Security Trust Fund meant to take care of procurement of security infrastructure and technology for security agencies sponsored by Representative Rimande Shaulu. While taking matters of urgent national importance, the lawmakers called for synergy among the various agencies of government to curb the unending cycle of law disaster across the country, considering its devastating effects on lives and property, as moved by Representative Diri Doe, the House describes as tragic the execution of abducted voluntary health workers Zefura Kurusa and Hawuliman by Boko Haram terrorists when the matter was raised by Representative Chiki Okafo and urged the federal government and international community to fast-track negotiations for the release of all abductees still held captive. Urge our development partners not to relent in their aid and support for counter-terrorism in Nigeria. A minute silence was observed in honor of the victims from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. Former Minister of Mines and Steel, Dr. John Faime Kayode, has been sworn in as governor of Ekiti State. He was elected as governor of the state under the All Progressives Congress Party on July 15, 2018. Ruth Fogwele monitored the swearing ceremony and now reports. The ceremony was attended by members and supporters of the All Progressives Congress from across the country. Governor Kayode Fayemi, taking the oath of allegiance, administered by the Chief George of Ikiti State, Justice Ayodeji Daramola. The governor promises to restore hope to the people of Ikiti State by upholding the mandate bestowed on him through transparency and accountability, provide infrastructure, and her nest the potentials Ikita State is blessed with. It is our duty, and we will live up to it, to ensure we thoroughly review, document, and widely disseminate the present state of affairs so that all and sundry can know what has become of our commonwealth. President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented by the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, described the governor as competent and served the nation well as Minister of Mines and Steel. He therefore called on the people of Ikiti to support the governor to turn around Ikiti State. I want to assure Ikiti people that we shall support the new administration 
in its quest for people-centered development. Governor Kayo de Fayemi is assuming office as governor of Igete State for the second time. He once served between 2010 and 2014. Ruth Aguele, NTA News. Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka has debunked the insinuation in the media that he endorsed former Vice President Atiku Abubakar during a meeting with former President Olushe Gumabasenjo in Abelkuta. In his words, I did not endorse Atiku Abubakar. My focus all along had been with former President Obasanjo, and I never brought Alhaji Abubakar into what I was doing. It was reconciliation, he said, not an endorsement. Bishop Kuka said his personal preoccupation was a pastoral one and not a political one. Its timing was purely accidental and purely circumstantial, not a plot. He said he, was, he has too many friends across party lines to openly endorse one candidate or party against the other. Meanwhile, the media... Buhari media organization BMO has insisted that the Catholic Bishop Matthew Kuka should withdraw from the National Peace Committee led by former head of state General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr. In a statement by Buhari media organization Chairman Ni Akin Siju in Abuja, this is as a result of his open display of support for the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abu Bakr contrary to claims that he did not intend to convene a political gathering. The Buhari media organization added that it fully supports President Buhari's admonition that religious leaders abstain from partisan politics. Now to some of the day's other news. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has warned that any developing economy like Nigeria that discounts the centrality of risk allocation principles in public private partnership is doing so at its own peril. He said that these are the opening of a two day public private partnership workshop organized by Global Infrastructure Hub in collaboration with Nigeria's Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC. He said the correct application of risk allocation principles in infrastructure projects is fundamental to bankability and the long term viability of such projects. The Vice President described PPPs in infrastructure development as simply a practical wisdom as the government lack resources to solely finance, build and manage public infrastructure. We'll further strengthen transparency and accountability in the Nigerian PPP environment, following up especially on the ICRC's earlier deployment of the PPP web disclosure portal. All of these efforts at improving transparency will provide more assurance to our people as they can now monitor the progress and implementation of PPP projects in the country. As the workshop attended by representatives from 13 countries, it was revealed that $7.6 trillion is required to meet the infrastructure needs on African continent between now and 2040. Country and will ensure that we give all the necessary support that you need in delivering the critical infrastructure. We are proud to be associated with the giant strides that this government has made in promoting development of PPP as a viable procurement alternative to public sector funding on critical infrastructure. On behalf of my colleagues at the ICRC to ensure that Nigeria becomes infrastructure sufficient in the shortest possible time frame. State House correspondent Adam Osama reports that a memorandum of understanding was signed between the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission and the Global Infrastructure Hub towards advancing the delivery of infrastructure in Nigeria and Africa. Time now to take our first break. We will be right back with more reports. Stay with us. With the itchy throat, strap cells. Go to the spotlight with the raspy throat. Strepsils. You in the pollution. It's you. Dry throat. Strepsils. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take Strepsils. Strepsils, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strepsils. Strepsils. 
Strepsils for a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy throat. I, Honorable Abubakar Bawabwari, felicitate with Dr. Kayo Defiami on his swearing in as the Executive Governor of Ekiti State today, 16th October 2018. As a Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Fayemi left giant footprints in the annals of the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, and we have no doubt that with this epochal event, a new vista of progressive governance is now open for the people of Ekiti State. Here is wishing the Governor more successes in his beloved state. Signed, Honorable Abubakar Bawabwari, Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development. But the excitement is still on. Draw what you did in your holidays, and you stand a chance to win your dream holiday. Follow three simple steps to enter. Step one, draw your holiday experience. Step two, snap a picture. Step three, send picture. Name and address to the WhatsApp number 0902 588 Hurry, go grab your interview pack now. Offer valid till stock last. Terms and conditions supply. Interview noodles. Tasty nutrition. Good for you. The time has come again when we all gather at the Unity Forum to celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity and showcase the beauty of our cultural creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST, in the Garden City of Potakot, River State. Come, let's celebrate our culture and heritage. Hold it 20th to 27th October 2018. Special features, dance drama, traditional wrestling, indigenous textiles and cuisine, arts and crafts exhibition, entrepreneurship roundtable, skills acquisition and many more. 20th to 27th October 2018, be a part of history. It's Nafest Rivers 2018, the festival that unites the nation. Otumba Olusegun Shewe, DG National Council for Arts and Culture, announced. Come wake me for death. As my matter be, it be like you say, person die, person God come wake up. Now so Buari come wake me from death. But I not get something when they go give you unless thank you. I did change to make farm. Then he helped me house. The house when I did before, he did link before before I born five king. You know I not get food when I go give them. That's why I share them. But now my picking they near me. Someday with me now. No be like Trump. I have to. I thank you. Eh? I know see her, but God go carry my uh, I do I go with that where I did. Thanks for staying with the NTA. President Muhammad Buhari has promised to put a stop to the disturbing trend of desperate youths going abroad for greener pastures and make the country livable again. Adam Osama reports. President Muhammad Buhari described as worrisome and counterproductive the illegal exodus to Europe by Nigerians and indeed Africans at grave risk to lives and limbs. He said with the abundant potentials in human and material resources, the federal government will do its very best to explore and exploit such potentials to make the country livable again. He said for Nigeria and Namibia in particular, there are vast opportunities to cooperate in areas like agriculture and trade for enhanced economic well-being for the two countries and their peoples. President Buhari recalled the sacrifices made for the freedom of Namibia by Nigeria in the late 70s. The outgoing High Commissioner of Namibia to Nigeria, Pingon Jabi Shipo, who spent nearly five years in the country, said he enjoyed tremendous support and cooperation in carrying out his duties. As he puts it, I am returning home with absolute satisfaction that our two countries are now more than ready for intra-African trade and exchange of state visits by the leaders. Nigeria and Namibia, he said, have a lot in common and wish Nigeria successful elections in 2019. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. 
Total eradication of hunger by the year 2030 is the focus of this year's World Food Day, set aside by the United Nations with a view to encouraging world commitment to food production and security. Musa Babali reports that Nigeria joins the world in marking the day, showcasing uh, major achievements recorded under the Buhari-led administration. If you have access to at least one square meal a day, then you are not among the over 800 million hungry people the world is housing. The world is concerned about the high rates of poverty, conflicts, and natural disasters, which made substantial amount of people, including children, lack access to food. And this is why the United Nations is encouraging all member countries to dedicate more resources towards improving food production and climate change mitigation. In 2017, at least 1.5 billion people suffered from micronutrient deficiencies that undermine their health and lives. The policy being implemented by this government, according to the record of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, has pushed the country not only to becoming food secured, but also among the world's largest producers of grains, vegetables and fruits. What is now required is for us to sustain the tempo by providing all the necessary support to our farmers, putting the right infrastructure in place, and encouraging more private investment into the sector. If not for the decisive steps taken by the current administration under President Mahmoud Buhari, our nation would have today been faced with greater threat of food insecurity, which would have even threatened our corporate existence as a nation. The National Agricultural Show was staged by the National Agricultural Foundation of Nigeria as part of activities marking this year's World Food Day in Nigeria. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Ogun State Governor Senator Ibikula Mosun has debunked rumors making the rounds that he plans to defect from the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, to another party on account of the recent primaries. A statement signed by the State Commissioner for Information and Strategy uh, described the news report in a segment of the media as a figment of imagination of the writers. The statement adds that Senator Ibikunle Amosun cherishes uh, and values the judgment and sense of justice of the President Muhammad Buhari, uh, reiterating that the governor stands for equity, justice and fairness over his own ambitions. Kano State Government has filed a criminal case against an online publication for defamation of character. The lawsuit is following the release of a video footage of Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. A statement signed by the Kano State Commissioner of Information, Youth and Culture, Malam Mohamed Garba, says the Office of the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice is challenging the video, which he says is cloned and manipulated. The video, which had gone viral, is said to have discredited the image of the governor. The statement debunks the allegation that the governor of Kano State did not receive any gratification of $5 million or any amount from any person or body. While the state government is taking legal action, Kano State government wishes to assure the people of Kano that the governor will remain focused in adding value to the lives of Kano indigents. Time now to join Michael Lalaye in our Lagos Network Center for more reports. Michael. Cool. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. The World Bank Board of Directors has approved and committed $120 million to the third phase of the Regional Disease Surveillance Systems Enhancement Redis project in West Africa. World Bank Senior Health Specialist John Paul Clark disclosed these at the Technical Subcommittee meeting of the Redis, coordinated by the West African Health Organization in Lagos. Joy Ken Abakuya has details. The Regional Disease Surveillance Systems Enhancement Redis project, financed by the World Bank, was set up to cover all West African countries in the wake of gaps shown by the 2014 Ebola outbreak in the region. The project focused on strengthening disease preparedness, surveillance and response has successfully completed two phases 
in seven countries, including Nigeria, where it curtailed the spread of Lassa fever. We need to invest in the health surveillance systems that are able to detect at the community level as well as at the clinic level anomalies or things that are unusual events that may signal the possible arrival of an epidemic in the country. Gathered in this hall are health professionals from 15 West African countries and the Mauritania. They are to adopt workable strategies for the implementation of the third phase of the REDIS project. For us to come together, we share experiences, we identify some challenges, and where there are challenges, we want to see how we can restructure. The, the bottom line is really to strengthen veterinary services in particular, so that they can meet their obligation regarding uh, Early, early warning regarding early detection of, uh, of any outbreaks. Participants are hopeful that the outcome of the meeting will help improve border surveillance for better management of outbreaks. The Regional Disease Surveillance Systems Enhancement Project is a World Bank's flagship investment in both health security and One Health agenda. It is currently providing credit and grants to 11 countries in Africa. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abapoya, NTN News. Okpoifa Olasukomi is the 2018 Mortina Teacher of the Year. He emerged from over 641 entries received from public and private schools across Nigeria after an intensive selection process. Dotun Ogunyemi has details. Okpoifa Olasukomi, an English teacher at the Government Day Secondary School, Karu Abuja, is a 2008 English graduate of the Lagos State University. He is the 2018 Mortina Teacher of the Year after a keenly contested race among 11 other finalists. His teaching philosophy is meeting his students at their level. The students actually know something. So you need to move from where they are to where they are supposed to be. It's not the battle between the knowledgeable and the ignorant. The students know something, even if it's ordinary shaku shaku. The teacher should be able to know how to use Shaku Shaku to teach any subject. You must be contemporary, you must know it. The Mortina Teacher of the Year, an initiative of the Nigerian Brewers Felix Ohiwiri Education Trust Fund, is one of the few occasions in recent times that rewards and recognizes the important role of teachers in the society. Introduced in 2015, the initiative has impacted over 30,000 students, built 417 classrooms, 30 libraries and affected 44 communities in Nigeria, having produced three previous winners. Managing Director, Nigerian Breweries PLC, says the company hopes to inspire the nation and bring back the glory of teaching. But when you do these kind of initiatives, what you want is that it raises, it promotes teachers and schools to raise the level and to participate. And what we see, it is happening. There's more incorporations and we're very happy about that. 26 state champions went home with 500,000 naira each. 750,000 naira went to the second runner-up. First runner-up got 1 million naira, while the winner received a check of 1 million naira and will receive 1 million for the next five years, in addition to the furnishing of six classroom blocks in his school. In Lagos, Dotson Ogunyemi, NTA News. Dangote Cement PLC has launched yet another brand to its growing portfolio. The Block Master Cement, according to the company, provides premium quality at a premium and affordable price. Dotun Ogunyemi again was at the launch in Lagos and now reports. The launch of the Dangote Block Master Cement is to meet the yearnings of Nigerians for better quality and stronger blocks, especially for story buildings deckings and other construction purposes. Group Managing Director Dangote Cement PLC says the new brand is a product of years of intense research and approved by builders nationwide. It's a winner and that is why we're very happy to come public with it. Generally you can use it for almost the same thing as the highest grade but when you begin to go for multi-level structures, decking, uh, columns, then you have to use something like block master. They will want you to give them a premium product at the price of the normal product. That is nothing more than that. Attesting to its quality and strength, engineers, builders and block molders say its rapid setting within an hour, especially during rainy season, 
makes it ideal for the Nigerian market. It's very okay. It's good. Even when I produce my block, I supply the block within 24 hours without breakages. Dangote Cement used the opportunity to urge Nigerians to patronize the brand in order to minimize the menace of building collapse in the country. In Lagos, Dotun Ogunyemi, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. Family, meet our active triplets. Mixology, for example, mixes well with drinks. Then enjoy every quick meal with Slurp It Off. And everywhere you go, there is Gogurt. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Activate your life, be who you want to be. Start an active life with the power of vegetables and fruits. Chivita Active. Be active. Do more. Glad to have you back in Abuja. Now let's head straight to business news. Headline inflation increases in September 0.05 higher than August rate. Just as Nigerian equities market erases Monday losses. Amina Nujem has more on business news. Welcome to Business News. The Consumer Price Index, which measures inflation, increased by 11.28% year-on-year in September of 2018. This is 0.05% points higher than the rate recorded in August of 2018, which is 11.23%. The headline index increased by 0.84% in September of 2018, down 0 0.21 points from the rate recorded in August of 2018 being 1.05%. On a month-on-month -month basis, the Urban Index rose 0.86% in September of 2018, down 0.14% from 1.00% recorded in August, while the Rural Index also rose 0.82%. In other business developments, the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Odoma Odo Odoma, says the federal government 2017 budget recorded an 86% implementation. This was disclosed on the sidelines of the just concluded 2018 annual meeting of the International Monetary Fund IMF and World Bank meeting in Bali, Indonesia. He said although the performance of the ministries and agencies of the federal government varied, it was generally an impressive record. And from the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the equities market on Tuesday saw trading close in positive territory, appreciating 0.95% to close at 32,722.18 basis point, while market capitalization stood at 11.946 trillion naira. Its year to date currently stands at minus 14.44%. That wraps up business news. I am Amina Nushain. And the Nigeria liquefied natural gas NLNG is poised to make Nigeria one of the top oil and gas suppliers in the world through the company's Strain 7 project. This was at a training workshop for experts in the oil and gas industry holding in Abuja. Muplang Dakok reports. The Nigerian liquefied natural gas NLNG is committed 
to the utilization of the country's goods and services by developing local content. This workshop is therefore to sensitize stakeholders on the opportunities in the reframed NLNG Train 7. The Train 7 project is an additional liquefied natural gas production line which will expand the country's production to 30 million tons a year as well as employ more than 10,000 people. But the managing director of the NLNG, Tony Atta, and other experts say Nigerians will have to position themselves properly through capacity building to be part of the huge project. We boldly step into the future, defining our next 30 years on the back of growth, increasing our capacity by 35% from 22 million tons as a country. We'll be able to add another 78 million tons, which will raise Nigeria's uh, export capacity of LNG. That should be able to bring us back to number three or at worst number four. We expect that the Train 7 project will provide a platform to expand existing businesses and create ample opportunities for new businesses. The two-day workshop is expected to spur Nigerians to participate in oil and gas and identify local supply chain capacities and capabilities, while the project will integrate oil-producing communities and foster international collaboration. In Abuja, Muplang Dakok, NTA News. The Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, has won the 2018 Best Improved Airport in Safety in Africa by the Airport Council International Africa Region. The outstanding award for safety was presented to Abuja Airport Manager Mahmoud Sani at the 27th ACI Africa Annual General Assembly Regional Conference in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. The conference, which is to end on the 19th of this month is considering the challenges of safety and security in African airports, issues and perspectives. The All Progressives Congress has assured its party members and the rest of the public that the party will continue to pursue rule of law and internal democratic ethics in all electoral processes of the country towards the 2019 general elections and beyond. National Publicity Secretary of APC, Lanre Isa Onilu, said it is in line with this that the party immediately after the conduct of its primary across the country set up National Primary Appeals Committee to address all grievances and issues that came out from the primaries, especially from its flag bearers. Political correspondent Abdullahi, Salihu Abdullahi reports. This to the submission of names of candidates by all political parties to the Independent National Electoral Commission. The APC is working around the clock to meet the deadline for the submission of its candidate for the general elections. The party will do the right thing. That's why we have an appeal committee, which has been meeting for nearly one week now, and um, the report is coming in. It's a party that ensures that the rule of law uh, plays um, at the end of the day. In the light of this, a concerned group from Niger State who spoke on behalf of the three elected senatorial candidates of the October 2nd APC primary okay. in the state have pledged their unalloyed commitment to the rule of law and equity and justice as being pursued by their party, the APC, in its inclusive democratic culture. Our leaders participated in the senatorial primary elections in Niger states, monitored by the panel sent by the National Working Committee of the party. It is not about winning primary elections, it's about winning general elections. What purpose does this have to please a candidate that will not represent the party in the National Assembly? They, however, urged the party and its leadership to hold on to that principle of equity, fairness, and justice in recognizing the result now that the party is ready to present its candidates. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Former Governor of Ekiti State Ayodele Fashe made good his promise this afternoon to be guest of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The former governor arrived EFCC office at about midday, accompanied by Governor of Rivers State Nyosom Wike and former Aviation Minister Femi Fani Kayode. Fayashi, in a customized t-shirt, came to the commission's office with a backpack. 
Ayo Farage is still with the EFCC as at the time of this newscast. Now let's take you to Aquabum State, where the state governor, Udom Emanuel, has urged local government chairmen in the state to ensure effective implementation of policies and programs of government. He said this while distributing utility vehicles to the local government chairman. Kelvin Samuel has the rest of the story. Distribution of 31 brand new Prado Jeep to local government chairmen across the state by the governor is to ensure quick response to issues and effective delivery of dividends of democracy at the grassroots. Presenting the vehicle to the chairman on behalf of the state governor, the Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Mr. Odor Egbenyo, says it is to ensure maximum productivity and assure them of government commitment to the welfare of all Aquaibon people. This project vehicles is in recognition of the need by His Excellency for the grassroots governance. But most of the chairmen has embarked on sustainable projects. It deems it necessary to encourage them to do more. The chairman of Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Aquabom State, Mr. Frank Archibon, thanked Governor Dom Emmanuel's late administration for purposeful leadership. We are living testimonies to the fact uh, that the grassroots has been better energized since he came on song as a uh, governor. I am very delighted for the sense of responsibility that has been expressed by His Excellency the Governor. The event featured the official handing over of the vehicles to the recipients in Uyu. Kevin Samuel, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. Suleiman in Kaduna brings us the next set of reports. Welcome. The multi-billionaire Kano Independent the Power Project is to be ready for electricity generation. The project is expected to provide additional 8 megawatts of electricity in Kano Metropolis. I would like Mustafa reports that this will help in reviving collapsed industries. The 14 billion Naira Kano State Hydroelectricity Project, TIGA, started in 2014 with expected completion period of three years. However, this could not be actualized due to paucity of funds at the initial stage. Work on the 8 megawatt plant is now back in full swing. All civil works have been completed while the electromechanical component is at advanced stage of completion. Governor Abla Umar Ganduji, who was on an assessment visit to the site, was informed by the contractor and project consultant that installation of turbines will be completed before the end of November. The governor, who was satisfied with the progress made so far, is optimistic that the additional power to be generated by the plant will improve economic activities in Kano State. So that our mega city will be like any other mega city in the world. Dr. Ganduji assured of his administration's continued commitment towards executing development projects in the nooks and corners of the state. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. And Jigao State Government has taken delivery of more relief materials courtesy of the Presidential Committee on Flood Relief and Rehabilitation. Awal Muhammad Kazora reports that representative of chairman of the committee, Alaji Ali Kodangote, handed over the materials in Duse for onward delivery to flood victims in the state. Jigawa State is one of the worst hit areas by flood this year, resulting in the displacement of many and thousands of hectares of farmlands washed away by the disaster. While some of the victims have returned to their localities, many are still taking refuge at various IDP camps. The items donated by the Presidential Committee on Flood Relief and Rehabilitation include bags of foodstuff, mattresses, mosquito nets, and other household materials. We are flagging up this distribution of those materials to the intended beneficiaries through the Executive Secretary, uh, State Emergency Management Agency of Jigao State. We are very grateful. All the commodities brought here will be distributed to the uh, victims affected by this flood. It will be recalled that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has made similar donation to the state. From Dus A, Awal Muhammad Kazori, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after these messages. 
And just before we take those messages, as Suleiman has just said, uh, let's just take this particular report because Nigeria and Algeria have resolved to work together to actualize the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline and Trans-Saharan Highway Projects, among others, to boost the economies of the two nations and Africa at large. They made this commitment at the fourth Binational Commission meeting in Algiers, the Algerian capital. Foreign Dex correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. Rose Mary Chukuma and Alaba Akintola Monday at the ongoing Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires, Argentina won gold and... Nigeria and Algeria share formidable relations that have seen the two nations working together on issues of common interest. They set up a binational commission in 2001, which has met three times until this fourth meeting, which is holding in Algiers. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyama is leading Nigeria's delegation to the meeting where commitments are again revisited in key areas such as trade, peace and security, water, agriculture, energy as well as communication. Apart from discussing over a wide range of issues, the representatives of the two countries signed agreements on water management and standardization that are key to economic relations. Uh, we believe that these projects are uh game changers for not just Algeria and Nigeria, but uh, for the continent. So, for instance, you know, we have the, 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 the basis of a, um, of a gas pipeline, you know. It'll be, um, it's going to give, you know, uh, our, our, our gas uh, exporters, you know, an opportunity to access the European market more directly. So, and, um, you know, and other uh, areas like trade and industry. And uh, I ask all the businessmen to visit Algeria, I'm talking about the Nigerian, the Algerian to visit Nigeria. There's a lot of possibility. From Algiers in Algeria, Makut Samuel Macham, NTN News. Now, let's take you to Dubai because the Gulf Information Technology Exhibition is not just a spectacle for dazzling attendees with modern technologies, but also an avenue for countries and organizations to interact and appraise abilities of new technologies in solving human needs. Nigeria joined in this revolution to show how application of new technologies can help countries entrench good governance. Cyber crimes, fake news and fake data are some global challenges brought about by information and communication technology, ICT. Even the World Wide Web inventor is worried about the wrong use of the internet and says he's reinventing the World Wide Web. Well, emerging ICTs such as artificial intelligence and blockchain are now providing solutions to these issues. For instance, with the blockchain technology, data records are secured from illegal alteration. At the Gulf Information Technology Exhibition Forum, discussions border on how countries can adopt and modify these new technologies to suit their specific needs. The Open Address Commission, where companies are being registered, blockchain technology is very applicable. You can always go lying online and print your documents without tempering with the original content of it, like NACO, like joint admission and matriculation board. These are some federal government institutions, particularly in education, that we think can also adopt blockchain technology and benefit from it. We have to have sort of data transparency and how data is being used, that you own your own data. And I think that blockchain is one of the key sort of cornerstones to make that actually happen here. It's the thing that you put, um, you know, transactions that you can use blockchain. From the in sports, Nigeria moved up to nine points in Group E of 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers after a 3-2 away victory over Libya this evening in Tunis ahead of their next game against South Africa, who are on eight points following their goalless draw with Seychelles. Kenema Budiki has more on 